enjoyed being really engaged in active learning, and I'm sure we all, from time to time, wonder to uh, get our students engaged as we watch them nodding off in the left division. So, these are the challenging issues that our speakers are going to speak about. Um, our first speaker is Adam Ambetta. Um, he's speaking on costs to enhance student learning and teaching. So, I'll keep the intros brief and simple and head straight over to the Studies and statistics over in the College of Business and Economics. I know it's a handful. Uh, today, I mostly will be talking about uh, apps that I've been using both inside or in the lectures and outside of the lectures to create content. Um, my uh, sort of involvement with using technology in teaching started very early by starting to use uh, you know, all the different sort of model resources that we have whether it's to do online quizzes or using the uh, Q&A and resource forums uh, in model. Uh, and I've generally been doing um, sort of the student service media uh, to continue to gauge how the students are interacting with the material to understand um, what I can improve and so on, um, which I know the student panel before us uh, talked a little bit about. Uh, but today, as I said, we'll mostly focus on some of the apps that I've been using at least for the last about two years, and I've really found them invaluable in getting um, students to interact better and uh, also getting uh, more content out to them so that they can uh, have a better learning experience. Right? So being a statistics teacher, uh, I always found uh, Sort of before the advent of these wonderful technology, that whiteboard or the, the document camera was sort of my best friend because I could do uh, um, explanation or graphs and charts and um, make my lectures more interactive than using, say, the PowerPoint, which is quite static, doesn't allow for uh, one to sort of be very damn. Um, Previously, when I had PowerPoint, uh, I would default to the whiteboard in the lecture theaters to uh, explain or show the concepts. Uh, but now, uh, what I call my digital blackboard uh, is essentially a tablet uh, and some of the apps that I use in them. Um, the one that I really love is called Notability. Uh, it's essentially a note-taking app, but I've been using it mainly as my sort of digital whiteboard. Okay. Um, what it really allows me to do when I'm teaching statistics in particular, where um, I have to show a lot of uh, uh, different applications and teach some of the context, where I find uh, rather than just talking with static pictures, it's always useful to uh, interact with those pictures, right? So uh, one, the one here is, so this is notability. Uh, so when I'm talking about, say, for example, regression in my courses, you know, uh, it's always good to sort of show what I want to do uh, with my tablet. Uh, and so if I'm talking about regression, how to fit a regression equation, talk about um, um, deviance and so on. Uh, I won't talk too much about the statistical jargon, but it, the, the app makes it very uh, useful, uh, or it makes it uh, very engaging for the students. Right? So uh, they can understand the math behind uh, all the different techniques that they learn. Um, and the good thing about Notability is that it has a recording feature. <coughs> uh, other than all this being recorded in the Echo uh, platform, I can still use Notability to create, say, extra video content where uh, I can just hit the record button, go through some small sort of, uh, create a small video lecture of some of the explanation of the uh, problem solving uh, tricks that I can show them. So, um, Notability makes it quite uh, convenient to do that. Now, I wouldn't be a researcher if I didn't have evidence to sort of support whether this has actually helped me or not. So, 
in the first couple of years that I did uh, run, I did use this technology, I sort of ran surveys within Model. They were all anonymous, so students didn't have to be, students were not identified, so they could uh, talk about openly about whether this technology was uh, helpful for them. And what I also did was, in the beginning of uh, that particular semester, or that particular year, I did not use the tablet straight away and the notability app straight away. So I, I kept with the uh, PowerPoint, just the static PowerPoint for some of the initial lectures and then sort of started, uh, started using uh, notability for more sort of the dynamic content. So uh, most of the responses that you can see are quite positive as to that they found uh, the tablet interface much better I'm not sure whether you can read those um, questions, but basically it talked about uh, whether they would prefer uh, the tablet, because they knew what I was using, the tablet approach or using PowerPoints or the document camera. And um, the response was overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly in support of using the tablet versus the PowerPoint, um, just a static PowerPoint. Uh, so that was about notability, and now it's become sort of the standard in my teaching. Uh, as I said, for me in statistics, there's a lot of uh, um, a lot of graphs and pictures and equations and so on that I have to work with, and using all of that in PowerPoint makes it really difficult. And it's also quite time-consuming to create that content, uh, whereas I find notability is quite useful. Uh, one other place where I feel Apps like Notability can use any other, but apps like Notability have made it much better is we can still have the PowerPoint as sort of the uh, framework uh, behind uh, and um, use, so if you're using tablet, then you can um, sort of annotate on those PowerPoints and they get all recorded so I can make those slides available later to the students for sort of extra material for them to refer back to. Yeah. Um, the other way uh, I may try to make uh, my um, classes more interactive, uh, and I know um, Salman, who's our next speaker, is going to talk exclusively about that, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but which was basically uh, Polar. Uh, I know any soft uh, licensing Polar, but I found it to be quite useful. Uh, so here's just some uh, uh, example. Uh, questions that I've created on Polar. So all you need is, uh, as we've seen from the keynote, you know, any sort of a uh, device. It does not have to be a smartphone. That's the plus thing about using Polar compared to what we now have within Model, where you still need a smartphone device to use it. So the Polar technology works with uh, those old age phones where you can still send in your response through SMS. Uh, a simple SMS will do. Uh, and most, most phone plans obviously support free SMS, so it's not really a burden mm -hmm. on the students as well. And again, in this, uh, uh, I use Polev uh, even without the support of the AMU license because it still allows a free user, you still get about 50 responses for every question, and you can ask a limited number of questions, and which I find are mostly enough, and I'm getting 50 responses mostly enough to. Uh, get students to start interacting in the class. Uh, I use it not just for uh, sort of a question, a survey question like this, where I put up a question, they go through that problem, we discuss it, and then they put in their response uh, to an actual problem. But um, I have more open-ended questions as well, where they can ask uh, questions themselves. Okay? Um, this one's obviously a question about what you do in your lectures currently to make them more interactive. Uh, and it sort of, as the response come in, uh, it sort of creates a word cloud, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, uh, if you get some responses, we'll see how the word cloud appear. Uh, and sometimes some words or some responses which have multiple words, uh, so everybody does not have to put in a single response. If there are response already there, people can vote up or down the same. Uh, so it can quite, uh, 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 it can make um, 
the lectures and classes quite interactive uh, feel. And lastly, the one last bit that I want to talk about, that this is uh, mostly centered around uh, creating content for consumption uh, outside of the lectures. Um, and it's mainly a video editing tool uh, called Camtasia. So these are just some of the uh, screenshots, but I can very quickly uh, play a video. I don't do this in the lectures. This is available to the students uh, through through Waddle. Uh, just play it in super fast speed. And this is where I create video content where uh, my main goal is to essentially teach them uh, the use of technology in the courses that I teach. Uh, most of the courses that I teach uh, use technology with it. Uh, some software like Excel or for statistics or software like R uh, quite a lot. And so I use these video lectures to train them as to how they can use and apply the concepts they've learned in the course, in the lectures, in those uh, environments. Uh, there are obviously uh, heaps of video uh, available, say on YouTube and so on, um, but, they, but I found that them to be quite generic. Uh, and the videos that I sort of create using this app called Camtasia uh, um, is very specific to the content that I teach and the, the concepts that they need to learn in the course. Uh, and I found them, to, again, to be quite useful. Uh, from uh, the responses I've seen uh, from the students, again, uh, they've seen uh, that uh, it's quite useful for them as well. Uh, so again, the questions that I asked mainly were uh, whether they found the material easy to understand and learn from, and whether they could then themselves apply uh, the various different concepts in different applications. Uh, for solving problems and so on uh, in different situations, as well as talking about, uh, given that this material is not part of the core curriculum, at least in those courses, uh, whether these video lectures were truly, truly supplemented their core material and learning, and they found it to um, learn about new, new technologies which they can use uh, in, not just in their course, but in uh, other courses later on, as well as uh, in their workplaces. Um, so I've um, found it to be quite useful. The, the reason why I talk about talking about Camtasia in particular is, although it might seem creating a video like that, hopefully problems like this always happen. Uh, there was another poll there. But uh, anyway, I'll just talk very quickly about it. You would think that creating your own videos would be quite a daunting task. There's a lot of, essentially, you need to be an IT expert to do that. Um, although myself, I you know I love playing around with new technologies and new apps, but I found Camtasia to be quite user friendly. It's very easy to create videos on that. You don't need to, for example, record your own uh, face or voice. Uh, sorry, voice is a must, but not your own face. So people who don't want them that to be in the video. Campania allows you to just capture a screen recording with, with, with audio. Uh, and it's quite easy to capture, just sitting at your own desk, and then edit it, and make it quite um, uh, appealing to the students by highlighting different parts in the video that you want. And they, all of those are quite easy to implement as well. And that's pretty much it for me. But today, these are some of the apps that I've used, as I said, both in and out of the lectures uh, to make uh, learning for my students uh, and uh, an exciting uh, experience. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for me? Yes, I I did have a sort of, a sort of a grant from my school which allowed me to get the license, uh, but it isn't very expensive, I would say, and it's a one-time license, so you don't need to 
sort of buy it every year, renew it every year. Uh, I've been using the same option for the last two or three years. I think from what I remember it was about $250. And so it, it isn't quite expensive. And once you have a license, you can use it on uh, all your own devices. At least two or three allows without you needing any more. And again, most of the other apps, notability, for example, they can be found on the App Store and uh, are quite reasonable and cheap. So it doesn't, it's not much of a financial burden. Yeah. Yes? Is the AMU supporting an alternative to Poll Everywhere? Or uh, yes, so currently they have, the within the Echo 360, the new ALP platform, uh, there is a system where um, we can upload our slides and um, then have or we can build up a sort of a slideshow within Echo 360, uh, and it has some of the functionality of Poll Everywhere. You can ask uh, uh, poll questions or open-ended questions and so on. Um, but I've, I've played around with it, I've tested with it, but it's not as user-friendly as Poll Everywhere. And the other, as I said, the other disadvantage of that is that uh, all the students need to be uh, need to have some sort of a device, smart device, so whether it's a smartphone, tablet, laptop, so on, within in the lectures, or for you to use them. So it's not as user friendly. And I've found, uh, particularly the ALP platform, it sometimes uh, sort of freezes, stops working. Uh, I'm sure over time it will get better, but currently I still find Paul everywhere. And the, and the free version, although only limits to 50 responses, uh, even for me, where class sizes are generally pretty large, I found 50 responses is more than enough to sort of get the students involved and start interacting. 